Muse. 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 Uh, English is my first language. This is not a good showing for me. This is a fine card game. This is a tricky card game. This is a card game with a pace it on theme, but what a fantastic theme of some of the most beautiful, wonderful um, paintings ever made. I mean, the, the artwork in this game is some of the best artwork you've ever seen in your life. But this is a numbers game. This is this is a not not a game produced by Rainier Kinizia, but it is a game that you would think that would be. This is a Lost Cities type game. It's all about numbers and drawing the right cards into your hand and mitigating those those damages those cards could go to you and wonky scoring and you get points for the cards you play and you get points if they're connected you get points of this and there's four ways to score points and it's not difficult the, the cheat sheets are going to be nice basically all the rules of the game are going to be printed on this on, on one sheet this is a simple game to teach it's a lot of fun some of those games, if you play it too much, you're probably going to lose interest in it rather quickly. It's a game you're going to sporadically play, and the artwork will entertain you as you play. The components are great. The card stock here is great. You have nice, thick tiles. Probably better produced in this game. Deserves. Uh, it, is a, is, it is in the line of the Griffin games, the little uh, box games. I think this is number 16. So if you're collecting those, th this will fit right into that uh, package. The box is small. Not quite portable. Although this could be a lot more portable. You could put this in a little sandwich bag or a freezer bag and fit nicely into it, and just and just get rid of the box. Although the box isn't huge. I mean, it's it's you know just a little bit bigger than my hand. Uh, fine game. I liked it. I think I'm going to keep this game around. I'm not going to purge it. It's not usually a typical game that I would like. It you can play it two player or I think up to four. I recommend this more with two players, although it plays the same with the, with more players because you're really just solitary in the game out. Um, I liked it. I, 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 I guess I don't typically like these type of games. The artwork may have dr dr drawn me in. Um, it had a lot of good decisions, but it wasn't... You, know, you could talk while you play this game. You don't really have to be too quiet and you take turns while you play. You play one card, you draw a card. It's fairly simple. I'm going to recommend this game if if you watch the floor of the game, is that something you think you liked? And try it, but you're going to know right away whether you would enjoy this game or not. This might be a good game for spouses to play together. Let's take a look at the components. So you're going to have these tiles that will be double sided. Each of these will be double sided, and you get a bag enough to play four of the or four players. And these are going to be pretty nice. It's going to be stairways, and it looks like a chandelier. Um, depending on which side. They're going to be double sided. So you can set this up however you want. This is going to be the recommended uh, startup for players. You're going to have these real these tiles that are really overproduced and, and look great for the lower. These are going to be trophies. These are going to score victory points at the end of the game. But they're severely overproduced. But they're nice. And they're, and, and they're really hard cardboard. These are, these are really nice little pieces that will be set up there. Uh, the main great component is going to be the cards. These are oversized cards, a little thin, uh, but the artwork is amazing. I mean, these are real works of art, real famous works of art, and they they, they look great. I mean, you have so many different pieces of art, and the numbers are what all this game is really going to be about is the numbers. They're really big, the icons, but you can see the artwork is just fantastic. I mean, there's something here for everybody. The artwork is just a dream about. I mean, some of these are the most famous paintings in the history of mankind, and, and they're just phenomenally produced. They're large. Uh, you can see how big this is, uh, and, and they're just fantastic. I mean, there's something here for everyone. You will enjoy playing this game and looking at this artwork. This artwork will draw people in who like art. The game is simple. It's a, a numbers game, a mathematic game, but at its heart that comes out are is this these, these collections of famous work of art and, the, and these are just wonderful and, and they look great the quality is fantastic I and mean, a game about art this is what you want to see as opposed to my copy of modern art that's not nearly as nice and the cards are nicely oversized that show the illustrations and just show how great this is so this is something that fans of art and different histories and time periods and styles will all be represented here. This, this is really good. So, 
as we show you the flow of the game, you'll be able to see this artwork, and it's great. Uh, the components in this game are just top notch. There's nothing I can complain about too much. These cards could have been a little thicker, but I might be nitpicking just a little bit for the type of game this is and what you'll be doing with it. You also get some very nice player aids that come with this game. Not that you'll need it because the game is so simple, but it's a turn summary and kind of tells you how everything will, will score out. Uh, we actually played the game without this. It wasn't easy because the game is so easy. And those are the components. The rules of the game. This is some pretty thick paper here. Can you hear that? I, I like the thickness of this paper. It's almost, it's almost, uh, almost not paper. It's stronger than a brochure. I like it a lot. It folds out. Um, has some good information with pictures in it, but I really like this back page. This is going to be your reference, even though um, there are there are player aids in the game that are fairly good. This is all you need, really. Uh, and it's going to be really, really good to keep track of everything. And you can set this in between two people and play the game with no problem. So the rule book is, is class act here. I really like this rule book. I really like that it has important reminders and special rules for three and four players are included. I like this game as a two player game, but I don't see any reason why you can't play it with more. Um, there is a partnership play with four. I mean, I'd probably stick with two with this, but so be it. Um, fan Fantastic rule book. I really enjoyed it. It was easy to read, and I learned the game with no problems. As for how to play this game, the easiest way is probably just to show you how you play. So you're going to take five cards off the top of the deck, and this will be your hand. The only thing that's actually going to matter are the numbers and possibly the colors. What you're going to do is you're going to play these. There's going to be three rows. One, two three, and you're going to play them in ascending order, uh, the best that you can here. And what you're going to want to do is score them. So let's say 46 out of my hand. 46 is a pretty high number. It goes up to 50. So I'm going to put a 46 on the end here. Now, what you see set up is going to be for the individual player. The other player or players will also have a similar board and will take turns. Play a card, draw a card. And I got the 50. So the next player would go. Now, he's not going to play to my set. This is my gallery. He's going to have his gallery, or she's going to have her gallery. So I got another 50. I know this is the highest number possible, so this makes sense to put it on the end. But should I put it here or here? So this is going to represent my highest, middle, and lowest. I'm not going to want to put it here, because let me go over scoring a little bit. So you're going to get a point for each piece of art in your gallery at the end. So you have a possibility of, um, of 18 points just by putting everything down here. If they're next to each other and they match in color, I'm going to get an additional point. So if this was next to each other, these are the same. This would be an additional point at the end of the game. So one for this one and one for this one. So in effect, I get a point for playing this card and another point for being next to it. So this is now is worth two, and this is worth two. If, if you see these green ones, these are staircases. So if it's like this, I'm going to get three points for this. So this will now be worth three points uh, because it's going up and down on it. Um, and then if you're the first one to complete an entire row, Let's say this bottom row here, you would get this card, which is worth four points, and then there's one for the middle, and then there's one for the top row. Okay. So this green one, I want to play this 50s. I know it's going to be the highest, but I'm not going to want to play it here unless I have to because these numbers, these colors don't match. So down here. Now when you set the game up, you, these are double sided, so you can set this up. This is the recommended setup for the first time you play, but you could have had an all green on one row or any combination thereof. I played a card, I draw a card. Now, keep in mind once again, the other team is doing this also. I think I said the highest number was 50. That is not true. There's a 53. It may be 60. Um, you, we, for a certain amount of players, you take cards out of the deck. They're all in the deck here. So. Uh, let's see what what we do next. Eight's a pretty low number. I feel confident putting this 
at the beginning of one of these rows, I'll just set it there, and then I would draw a card, and this would continue on, on and on and on. So 53 is high, I will put this on the end, giving up the bonus. So now I'm going to give up that bonus that I had there. You continue to do this, and now as you play cards down, you're kind of, as you can tell, now what I've done is I've kind of put myself into a bind here. i got to put a card between 8 and 30 here, and two cards between 30 and 53. I will be able to do this, so if the game kept continuing on, I could put a 23 here. Now the reason why I want to put a 23 here, I'm going to get the bonus for it being side by side. 8, 23, 30 is in ascending order, and now I have to draw a card. Got the six. So the six is going to be pretty low. I'm probably going to put that not here because these two don't have a bonus, at least for now. So maybe I'll put it up above. Because remember, the red blocks, so there's no points. If these two matched, nothing here. Only with the green where there's a staircase where you can walk up and down. Player card, draw a card. I got a 21. This creates an interesting situation for me because if I place it here, which is still a pretty low number next to that six, then the rest of the numbers, if I place this here, the rest of the numbers have to be 21 up to 46, but these two match, so I would get a bonus for that. Now, I would not get a bonus here, even though there's a staircase here, because this is gray and this is red. I'll go ahead and play that there and draw a new card. Now, I may not be optimizing what I should do. I'm more trying to illustrate what will happen during the game. So, let's say 42. I'll place that there. Now, if I would had a certain number of cards, we're sneaking this through a little bit more clearly, and let's say I want to put a 45 here to get that bonus next to each other. I've kind of tied myself in here. So 45 to 53. I'll draw a new card. Now if I had a card between 45 and 53, I would probably want to go ahead and set it in there, which I do. And it's red, so luckily it's going to match here. Now I will not get the bonus here. So you can see how playing these cards will continue to kind of uh, give you a little bit of brain burster trying to get the color matches to the left and right then where the stairs are at you want to match them up and down and you may take some risks so you may put yourself into a corner where you're not able to play it if you're not able to play a card and you have to pass the other player continues on until the game is over so then I drew I drew too many cards so this is my hand right now I need to see what I want to play this 36 looks pretty good up here next to that 46 I'm taking a huge risk but I want that bonus maybe that's not the way I would play if I was playing for real, but um, 21 and 36. So now I gotta find some cards in between there that might match up. So this 44 that's in my hand, completely useless. Because I can't play it before the 36, this row is full, and I can't play it before the 42. So I've pretty much got myself down to a four card hand, because this one I can I, I can never play at this point in the game. So I can play the 38, so I'll go ahead and play the 38 down here and pick up another card. The 56 is completely useless. So now I kind of got my hand three cards that I can play. So I know I can play the 29 here. Doesn't give me a bonus anywhere, but it is a point for every card you can play. And this is my hand now. And I could play the 27, that would finish that row up. Like I said, I don't know if I'm playing ideally, but here's a three that I just drew, which is going to be good here. That was good luck. You see there's a little bit of luck involved because I'm going to get a three-point bonus for this connection. Plus three is pretty low, so I know between three and 38, I have two more cards to fill. Remember, I have two completely useless cards I can't play anywhere. So I know I'll be able to finish with the 12 and the 25, let's say, because I'm going to get a bonus here because of the stairs. That looks pretty good. So the way you, and that would be the end of the game for me, uh, and I filled it up, and remember if you're the first ones to fill up a row, obviously I was playing just one player, so you would get this, whoever is the first, those are worth 4 points each, so there's a possibility of 12 extra points flowing around. I get 1 point for every point, so the maximum is 18 here, 2 points for every 2 adjacent, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, hopefully I did that right. Uh, if not, I'm sure somebody will let me know. So I think there's an extra 10 points. Now, three, if these matched, they don't. Nope, they don't. Nope, they don't. No, they don't. Uh, they do. So there's an extra three points and an extra six points there. And that's how that's played out.
You add those points up with any points you may or may not have got from this. Highest points win, and that is Mule or Muse. That's how you play this game. Like I said, the, the artwork is beautiful, but it doesn't really play into the game very much other than look at. It's all about the numbers and the colors. And once again, this could have been set up in any way we chose to. It didn't matter. That was just the recommended setup. And that's how you play the game. Who should buy this game? I'm going to recommend this to anybody who likes numbers, who likes to play around with the numbers. A lot of Kinesia games have those play with numbers. If you want a light little card game that you can pretty much play with anybody, so non-gamers can play this game. I think non-gamers may like this more than gamers. Um, it's a nice light filler. You know, I, I, like I said, I'd probably stick with two people with this game. If you're waiting on some people to show up, this could be something you could sit down and play rather quickly. The box has 30 minutes, but I don't see why you can't get through it in 15. You know, if you don't take too long and you play your card and just kind of roll with it, it's not meant to be a brain burner. It's not meant to be the deepest experience you're gonna have. Just have fun playing it. If you're a fan of art or you have somebody that's a fan of art, or you want to draw in your spouse with art or buddy with the artwork who, are, who is a big fan of art and you want them to try a game, this may be it. It has some of the most fantastic art pieces in the history of mankind included in this game. And it's beautiful, beautiful to look at. And it doesn't matter what type of art you like, there's probably something in this box that you're going to enjoy or at least can appreciate all the different art and just the famous art pieces in this. So new gamers can play this, non-gamers, light gamers, gamer gamers is a filler, and then you got art appreciation people. This might be a good game to have in your collection if somebody drops by and, and might be willing to play a game with you, but you want to get them on something easy. Maybe something that hooks them in to play something heavier. Maybe you take it to ride down the, ro the road. This might be it. There's enough here. I could see couples taking this to a hotel room when they're on vacation. Uh, the kids go to bed, maybe play a couple hands of this before they go to bed or to pass some time. I think also that um, I could see people taking this to like a community hall, playing with some younger kids. I could see maybe this game working in the classroom a little bit. Uh, maybe some things need to be modified for that, but I think it could work. I think there's some probability questions that can be made in this game. I think there's some questions to the art. I think there is some design issues with the the uh, play of the numbers. I think kids could learn something from this. Um, math teachers might be able to use this a little bit. Um, and, I, and I think that's, that's a good thing for this game. So I'm going to recommend this game. Try it before you buy it if you saw the full of the game and it's just not for you. Otherwise, this is a game that could have a lot of traction in the collection. I like it. It's not going to blow your mind. It's not going to be the deepest experience you've ever had. It's a solid card game.